Hey guys, welcome back to Various Corner. It's Emily here and today I'm going to be showing you guys seven books that you absolutely need to read. Guys, when I say that you need to read these books, you genuinely need to read these books. These are some of my favorite books of all time. They're so good. They hit you in the feels. Most of these are hard hitting. So I really, really hope you enjoy. But before I show you the books, please subscribe, comment down below and like this video. All of my social links are down in the description box below, as well as my Amazon wish list if you would like to give me a book. Now let's get on into the video. The first book is one of my favorite books of all time, but I never really talk about it enough. It is Far From the Tree by Robin Benway. This book is so beautiful. I'm going to try to make the explanation simple. It follows Grace, Maya, and Joaquin, and they are all a part of the foster care system, and they are all siblings, but they don't know it yet. So it starts off with Grace, who is a teen mom, or she is just giving birth to her baby and she puts it up for adoption and after that she's like hey I want to find out about my biological family so she finds Maya and Joaquin both Grace and Maya are adopted and Joaquin is not so then it follows Maya who is a part of the LGBTQ plus community and also she's struggling with trying to fit in within her family because she looks completely different from them and also she is strugg struggling with one of her parents being an alcoholic and so they all have their different struggles that they deal with. Joaquin never was adopted and he's now with foster parents that want to adopt him after he's 18 years old and he has really really bad trust issues because of stuff that happened in the past and he's like I love you guys so much but I just feel like it's gonna end in failure. So Grace brings them all together and it's like hey I want to find our biological mom and they're like no way she abandoned in us like we do not want her but grace just giving up a daughter for adoption but still loving that daughter so much she's like no please please do this for me and it's a found family element by the same time like coming back together with your blood family and just just becoming family again it's so beautiful so good i've read this three different times and each time i tear up because it's just so beautiful it's won the national book award like period dude like it's so good it's so beautiful so good just like you think it's going to be too much because they have all these different elements to it but it's just so perfect all the levels come together so beautifully and perfectly and truly like please pick this book up you need it in your life you're gonna absolutely love it just as much as i did moving on from a wholesome family dynamic we have paperweight by meg haston this is about a girl named stevie and she has an eating disorder and her father's like Stevie, this is getting out of hand. I'm putting you in a treatment center in New Mexico. And Stevie's just like, okay, whatever. I don't give a crap. I'm just going to wait it out until my brother's death anniversary because she wants to die on that day as well because she also feels like she was part of the reason that he died. And so this book just so much is going on so beautiful there's a person back home element not like she's waiting for a person back home but there's a lot of flashbacks to when her brother was alive and the night that he did die and the person that was involved with both of them and how why she feels like it was her fault um these flashbacks come when she's talking to the therapist in the home it's so good i recommended this book to one of an, an old friend of mine actually my old middle school bully which is kind of funny to say um I was like hey I think you would really like this book and he read it and he was like he called me up and he was like Emily dude dude this book like the prose in this book is absolutely phenomenal the metaphors just how Stevie speaks how the main character is you're just like yes please continue speaking I love the way you talk it's so beautiful I got this recommendation from Hannah from A Clockwork Reader and she has had an eating disorder before and she has said that this is the best book that shows what an eating disorder is like and I 100 billion trillion percent agree this book is one of the best mental health books I've ever read in my entire life it is so extremely beautiful powerful and impactful I love it so much please pick it up if you are okay with the trigger warnings and that type of thing um so so good definitely read it next book is clap when you land by elizabeth acevedo if you don't know who that is i'm pretty sure you've heard of one of her other works which is the poet x or with the fire on high if you don't know who she is after that she is an amazing dominican puerto rican queen who writes such beautiful and impactful novels that are all about hispanic culture and it's so freaking nice to see because i'm puerto rican myself and i when i was growing up i really never saw any books that really showed my culture and showed how i was growing up and these books 
do that. This is the one that I feel most seen by and it actually follows a real life event that occurred after 9-11. So basically a plane that was headed to the Dominican Republic crashed and after the US kind of ruled that it wasn't a terrorist attack, everybody forgot about it, including myself. I had never heard about it until I read this novel. And so it follows two young ladies, one Camino and the other one Yahaira, one who lives in New York City and the other one that lives in Dominican Republic and their father was on this plane that crashed and it's the same man and they don't know the other person exists. So basically it's about these two young women and their families coming to terms with their father dying and going through this process of grief but also realizing that this man had a double life and they're trying to figure out who the other person is and why their father had a double life and how everything works out especially when one of the sisters was trying to go to the u.s to have a better life for herself and it is so freaking beautiful and good and amazing and although it's told in verse did i even tell you that it's told in verse beautiful so quick and easy to read it it just tells you get so much out of it i feel like a lot of people complain about novels written in verse because they feel like they can't really get a, attached to the characters and this is 1000 billion percent not the case I felt so connected to these characters. I felt so seen by the characters, the diversity, not only with Hispanic culture, uh, these follow, uh, of course, Dominican uh, young ladies, and they're also Afro-Latinx, but also the LGBTQ community is also in this novel. Um, so good, so beautiful. One of my favorite works by her, and just in general, one of my favorite books ever. So please go check this out if you wanna read diversely or if you just really want to learn more about that scenario. The next book is a book that you probably already have heard of, but I don't talk about it enough, so I need to show you guys. It is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book is so good. It is basically all about this girl named Evelyn Hugo and her rise to fame and all the seven husbands that she has had along the way. So now she's old and not old, old, like she's not that old, but she's out of her fame. Like she's just living her best life with all the money. Um, but basically she called upon this girl named Monique, who is a reporter and a writer and a journalist. I guess those aren't the same thing. Um, but she, Monique's like, I don't have a life. Why are you talking to me? Like, why me out of everybody? Which you'll find out at the end. There's, there's a twist. Um, but she calls Monique to write about her life. And Monique's like, why are you doing this? And she's like, just write about my life. And we learn all about it. And it's so good. It's so beautiful. So perfect. I genuinely, when I was reading this a long time ago, I think I read this in 2018, maybe 2019, I don't remember. I was just blown away. I genuinely thought she was a real person. I had to look, I had to look it up. I was like, is this a real person? She's not a real person. Oh my gosh, Taylor Jenkins Reid really just did that. She really did that. It's so good. So just the writing, beautiful. Like how is it so poetic, but at the same time, so harsh? Do you understand what I'm saying? Evelyn Hugo is such an unlikable main character, but at the same time, you're rooting for her the whole entire time. If you haven't heard of this book, honestly, look it up. I don't think I'm doing it justice right now, um, but it's so good. And her new book, Malibu Rising, came out and I need to get it because I just need to consume any book that Taylor Jenkins Reid publishes. The next book is very near and dear to my heart. It is Transcendent Kingdom by Yagi Yasi. This book basically follows a girl named Gifty and her and her family moved from Ghana to Alabama of all places. Why Alabama if you want to come to the United States? I don't know. Um, but basically her and her family moved to Alabama and it shows her story growing up until her brother dies of an overdose and her mother falls into a depression. So at this time, she basically tries to help her mother with her faith, but now her mother is going into another depression again, and she's trying to help her this time with her degree in neuroscience. So it's kind of like flashbacks and it goes back and forth from her childhood and now, and it basically shows her relationship with faith, with the church, with science, with the community in general, with toxic purity in the church and in society, and also racism. It follows so, so, so much. And it also shows her relationship with her brother and her family and the, up until her brother died and after her brother died. And it was so beautiful. I feel like a lot of people are put off from this book because they're like, I'm not faithful and I don't want to be pushed into a faith. Um, and this book is not about that. It's not faith versus science. It's not, I want to push you towards science and I'm not, I want to push you towards faith. This book does such a good job of just showing you her perspective and showing you what she's been through. And it's so beautiful. It's just a gifty story and it's a beautiful and wonderful story at that. It's 
genuinely one of the most real and authentic stories I've ever read and this is fictional. It's so beautiful, it's so wonderful and how or why I feel so connected to it is because Gifty and her brother's relationship the, or the power dynamic that they have where Gifty is the good child and the one that always goes to church and the one that always does well and her brother is the rebellious one and the one that falls into substances is just like me and my brother's relationship and it was so cool and not cool but like really nice to see that power dynamic displayed in a way that I felt so seen by if that makes sense it's so good please do not uh discard it because there's mention of faith in here if you are not faithful like I totally understand where you're coming from but again it's not faith versus science it's maybe science and faith put together or also just showing you gifty story it's so beautiful so impactful so powerful I cried during this oh my gosh it's so beautiful and really short so definitely definitely give it a read guys okay we're delving off of like hard hitting contemporaries I promise you I would have put the hating game in here if you don't know what the hating game is perfection so good I love the hating game so much but I talk about it way too much and I'm still talking about it right now go read the hating game you need to read it i don't care it's an adult romance office romance so beautiful so good but i decided that i talk about it too much so the kiss quotient by helen wing this book so good so good it's another adult romance and it follows a girl named stella lane and she has asperger's which is a form of autism and she is super successful she has a career where she analyzes data to predict customer purchases so cool she's very successful she has a lot of moolah and dough and money but the one thing that her parents are kind of like pressuring her to get and that she also kind of wants herself is a relationship but she's really not good with it so she hires somebody to kind of teach her how to be in a relationship and how to touch her in a certain way that isn't like if you touch her lightly she doesn't like that because of course of her autism so it's so many different things so good so beautiful the representation both stella and michael who is the male love interest are asian yes we love the representation it's so good michael oh my gosh like nobody can beat Josh from the hating game but Michael comes a close second he's so patient and compassionate and kind even before he learns that she has autism he's just genuinely the best person ever and he is so considerate and kind and patient and oh my gosh I cannot tell you enough how good this book is the only bad thing I can say about this book is that I felt like the ending was a bit rushed and in the other companion novel the bride test I also felt like the ending was a bit rushed and maybe that's just a thing that she does Helen Huang I don't know but it was good overall I loved it literally pick it up if you're looking for an adult romance it's so good the seventh and final book is Sadie by Courtney Summers this is a YA mystery thriller and it is so freaking good like I know a lot of people hate on YA mystery thrillers but this is genuinely it it basically follows or it has two perspectives one of a guy that is talking in a podcast about how he was trying to find Sadie and then the other one is Sadie's perspective when she's trying to find her little sister Maddie so basically Sadie lives in the suburban like rural area and her mother is kind of like an alcoholic and a druggie and so she doesn't really take care of Sadie and her little sister so Sadie took on that motherly role and one day Maddie was kidnapped and killed and so now Sadie is trying to go find the killer because that was her whole entire purpose in life was Maddie and now she feels like she doesn't have a purpose and she's really freaking depressed and she wants to go find the killer and so we follow her perspective while she's doing that but also one thing that I really really like is that Sadie has a stutter and I've never really followed a main character that has a stutter before especially in a serious setting like this one and it was so good and it was I really love seeing that aspect of it and also Sadie's a little bit unlikable but at the same time you're rooting for her and then the podcast guy Oh, he's on her trail. He's going fast. I love the multimedia element. I feel like a lot of people say that when you read this, you need to read it on audiobook. I didn't read it on audiobook, but I 1000% agree that I think audiobook is the best way to read it. I still really, really enjoy this book and it was so good. A lot of people don't like the ending because it is a little bit open-ended, but they do basically just give, say, like, what happened like it's, it's very much implied like you know but it's open-ended but I really like the ending people say they don't I loved it it was so good and that was the final book of this video so those were the seven books that you absolutely need to read 
genuinely please pick all of these books up i if you don't feel like i sold you enough on these please look them up and see if it would be for you because these are so beautiful and amazing and one of the best books of all time in my opinion <laughs> so thank you guys for watching this video please subscribe comment down below and do whatever you want to do and goodbye